How's it going, everyone? This is Dixon of the Ultimate Gamer. I'm logging on and riding on a bicycle delivering newspapers. Or should I say, throw newspapers? <laughs> Hell, or even throwing away newspapers. <laughs> anyway, the game I'll be playing today is the original arcade port of Paperboy from Atari and Midway games. And as we predict, the player is a Paperboy. In a suburban residential area, delivering newspapers to pay subscribers. That sounds simple, right? If that's what you're thinking, then you're mistaking. Because the creators of the game don't want to make this a simple job. They want this paper boy to be more of an adventurer while going through his tasks seven days a week. I think that sounds awesome. Adventurer in meaning that there will be hazardous objects that you will have to avoid when on job. This paper boy must aim properly because you can't move back. He can only go straight forward. And this paper boy can hold up to 10 newspapers at a time, but there will be bundles of refills when passing through. The paper boy does have a difficulty street option to choose from at the beginning. But regardless of what street you choose, danger awaits. No matter if you do these deliveries properly or not. In a way, that works out just fine for me. Because breaking rules in video games has always been part of me anyway. Take Paperboy for instance. Paperboy is one of those early games that has the concept of breaking rules. Especially as a kid on a bicycle vandalizing or inflicting injuries on people with his newspaper rolls. Or taking abuse as a kid from residentials or jaywalkers or cats and dogs or vehicles and tons of other things like manholes or radio control cars, etc. And if you get hit once, crash or fall off your bike, you lose a life. With the exception on the training course, which at the end of each day... There's a bonus training course mission where you actually have to jump through obstacles or hit targets with your newspapers. And how do you like that? If you make it through the finish line, your fans will cheer you on. I'm surprised to see this paper boy has fans, including his girlfriend. But sadly, you only have three lives, and no continues after you lose all your lives. <sighs> That's a bummer. My favorite things I like doing in Paperboy besides getting the newspapers delivered is that... Um, what is that? Well, you guessed it. Breaking all the rules. Like breaking house windows, pissing people off, and getting chased. And sometimes it's even funny when the Paperboy crashes too. <laughs> Now one thing that comes to mind when on a dangerous street is what this paper boy should have done instead of wearing a baseball cap. He should have worn a bicycle helmet, plus knee pads and elbow pads for safety. Yeah, I know it's true you look stupid wearing a helmet, but in this case, safety is more of a top priority than looks. You know what else would also be smart? Since Smurfy's Law exists on these streets anyway, not just have protection for yourself, but have protection for your bike. Like self-defense gadgets or something. Oh yes, I've been also thinking of something else. Since today in the present world, these newspapers are not a common thing anymore. Since we all have internet and smartphone devices to look up all that here and there. But I can tell you one thing. Whatever it was in those newspaper articles in the Paperboy game back then, I'm sure whatever's in those articles makes a hell of a lot more sense than what the mainstream media has been pushing on all of us today. Which is communist propaganda crap. Now the Paperboy game itself. Well, it's always been playable. The music is cool. But the way you control the Paperboy, I'm not that impressed. You most likely ride on the sidewalk or on the half of the street by that sidewalk until you cross the street. And you can either slow down or go faster, but you can't stop. And as I already said, 
you cannot turn back. And when you lose a life, you at least respawn in the same spot. But sometimes, you can respawn right behind a crossable object, making you crash again after you respond. What were they thinking? Also aiming newspapers on a subscriber's doormat can be hit and miss at times. But if you get it in the subscriber's mailbox, you get a bonus score. Which I doubt that's possible in real life that a paper boy on a moving bicycle can get a roll of newspaper inside of a mailbox from a distance, especially. Well, whatever the case is. But if you do miss the subscriber's doormat or mailbox, or if you break one of their windows, they will unsubscribe to you the next day. Meaning you lose a subscriber. Bad for business, perhaps? Also, I forgot to mention, when you uh, hit Game Over, the newspaper article comes up saying, The Paperboy quits. Yes, that's right, Paperboy quits. And I don't blame him, because he's practically risking his life delivering newspapers to subscribers on a very dangerous street. And he couldn't take it anymore. Makes perfect sense. <laughs> I would probably say since the paperboy quit, he should probably sue his boss and the newspaper company. Or better yet, he should sue the city for the damages he took when on job. And precisely if the paperboy wins the case, he should also pay for the damages he cost when on job, intentional or not. Get what I mean? Paperboy was first released in 1985 for the arcade then ported to many home computers and home consoles within the next six years. I'm going to also take you back on a memory lane of when I first heard about Paperboy. Back in my early elementary days with TV commercial for the NES, the commercial at the time made me want to get that game on the NES. Which never did happen, but as time goes by, my interest for the game pretty much wore off me. In a way, that's kind of a good thing because the NES version is totally inferior to the arcade port. In fact, Angry Video Game Nerd did a review on the NES game of the Paperboy. And you should see his take on it. And I didn't get a chance to play Paperboy until the first Midway's Arcade Treasures compilation came out on the 6th generation consoles. PlayStation 2, Xbox, and GameCube. And I've been playing uh, the arcade port off the main recently. I personally haven't played the arcade port on the actual arcade cabinet. Which looks like the actual true way of playing it since it has the bicycle handles to control the bicycle. Hopefully I can get around to working that out someday. Now there is a Paperboy 2 game. But the sequel went straight to home consoles and home computers, so there was no arcade game of the sequel. And there was also a Paperboy 64 game exclusive on the Nintendo 64 console. Now I'm not sure if I'm going to get around to doing those ones, unless if I get enough requests or if I have time to do so. My final verdict on Paperboy the arcade game? Well, Paperboy was never one of my favorites, but it's still a fun game to play time to time, and it will always be a classic. That wraps it all up for this episode. Thank you all very much for watching, and this is Dixon of the Ultimate Game Room, logging off. Oh wow, that's what I get.